Oh, day, everyone. Um, I know we're sad, but it's time for a little talk session here. Um, I'm going to give you my thoughts on how I feel about Zach Taylor, the head football coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, ooh. Zach, I think, I think the way he brings a, a good culture to this team. I mean, think where we were at with the Marvin Lewis days, you know, when Marvin Lewis was the head coach. Um, you know, people used to make fun of us because most of our players were going to jail. Uh, Marvin Lewis was a second uh, chance guy. He always loved giving people second chances. He gave Adam Pacman Jones a second chance and actually you know, that benefited us. Um, Von Perfect. Uh, he was an undrafted free agent uh, out of Arizona State, I believe. And Marvin Lewis gave him a chance. And wow, uh, we think what a guy who just <laughs> high energy. Uh, his antics became too much uh, after the 2015 debacle, uh, where Bomb Perfect had the uh, <laughs> the greatest highs and the greatest lows uh, in Bengals history. Uh, and hopefully one one day soon I will revisit that game because that's a game that will forever live in my mind. Uh, more than the 2005 uh, playoff game against the Steelers when Carson Palmer blew his knee out. Um, I will definitely have thoughts and feelings on that one, too. Um, but Zach, well, back to Zach, I named Marvin, which is, well, here's a story about Marvin. I remember when, uh, when uh, Michael Vick was coming back to the NFL, there was a rumor that uh, he would come to the Cincinnati Bengals, that that was it was between Philadelphia Eagles and the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, what? Imagine, just imagine, uh, if Michael Vick went to Cincinnati instead, and Palmer left, and instead of handing in Dalton, we had Michael Vick. Uh, there is a timeline where that happened. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, the Cincinnati Bengals won the Super Bowl with Michael Vick. But um, Michael Vick, I mean, remember the 2010, 2011 season? Holy hell. Michael fucking Vick, you know? Huh, he was back. <clears throat> so, I mean, but with Marvin, it was just kind of like he was very quiet. Um, it seems like his teams sometimes were chaotic. Remember the 2010 team uh, with Terrell Owens and Chad Ochocinco? And, I mean, we went, we went four games that year. Uh, and it just it, Marvin was there just too long, and, and it was clear. So with Zach here, his first two seasons, like even in his first season, I saw that uh, Zach's game plans <clears throat> were actually sometimes pretty good. It was clear to me that he was very inexperienced, very inexperienced, and the first year really showed it. Like some bad, like like he didn't know how to like play clocking management. He was pretty bad at timeouts, challenges, like. Yeah, you name it. It was bad. Um, what sold me on Zach Taylor, uh, it was the 2019 season against the Cleveland Browns. Um, his first year we were at Cleveland. Um, and the offense was just moving the football all over the Cleveland Browns. The only issue was when we got into the red zone, Andy Dalton couldn't score a touchdown and, and Joe Mixon couldn't score in the end zone. But Zach Taylor's game plan and plan brought him all – like systematically was going through that uh, that Browns defense. And then, it, you know, so as soon as they don't score, they score three points, the Browns get the ball back, and this Bengals defense in 2019 was horrendous. Uh, Nick Chubb would do a big run, or Baker Mayfield would throw to his, his nameless receivers, not name Odell Beckham Jr. Um, but I liked his game plan. I could see that, yeah, we need more players. Uh, and when 2020 came around with Joe Burrow, mm, it, the team felt a little different. Still was pretty bad. Um, but Joe gave us a chance. You can tell that Joe, Joe Burrow was really good. Um, and when Joe Burrow got hurt, I mean, against the Washington Redskins, right when we hit our easiest parts of our, that schedule that year, because we remember – um, that first half of our schedule was pretty dang hard, and Joe Burr was getting eaten alive. And I mean, after we beat Tennessee, 
um, and then go to our bye, and, and we, we lose to Pittsburgh. I mean, like, Joe felt motivated, and I felt like we were going to make a run. I don't know if it will play off, but at least a run where they're, like, where they're winning multiple games more than two games. Uh, that didn't happen. Um, but for Zach to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday Night Football with Ryan Finley as the quarterback, uh, yeah, Zach, Zach can surprise you. But Zach can also disappoint you. And I think the uh, 49ers games calls into question about Zach Taylor as a head coach. If, 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 if he's a, the future of the Cincinnati Beagle head coach. I believe he is. Um, Joe Burrow uh, likes him. I feel like Zach is getting better um, each game. Um, I know that, would, <laughs> that it might be shocker, but I feel like the longer Zach is in there with Joe Burrow, they're all, them two together. Um, it's going to be something special um, because of the way Zach Zach Taylor preaches on cultures. Like, listen to this guy. Look, look at how this team talks about the team and about each other. It feels more cohesive. They feel like a unit. They're saying all the right stuff, and then when they perform on the field. Like when they destroy the the Ravens forty one to seventeen, uh, I mean that, that's Zach too. I mean like we gotta give credit to Zach, but the forty nine er game. Now granted the first fourth and one um, when we kicked the field goal that's fine. I mean the points the defense was doing well. Okay, go three three, it's fine. When you really have a problem with Zach is when you open. The second half, you're down 17-6. You need to score. You need to get the offense going, Zach. And instead, he goes one run, two run, three run, fourth play, punt. That's not what we needed. It's not what the offense needed. So it's like I feel like some of the stagnant, the, the stag, the, the reason why the Bengals' offense is it's inconsistent, because I sometimes I think the play calling is very inconsistent. Um, he talks about being aggressive. Uh, sometimes he becomes too conservative when that when things get tough. He got conservative against the Green Bay Packers. He got conservative when he played against. I mean, he was over aggressive against the the Minnesota Vikings. I think I honestly think um, when he got too aggressive against Minnesota and I, and then Minnesota, I was at that game. He was very aggressive. He went he went on fourth fourth and one on. The Minnesota Territory. And we're like, what are you doing? I think because he, he talked about being aggressive. Um, but I feel like he's aggressive at the wrong time. Um, especially in overtime. Joe Burrow. Hot hand, Zach. Hot hand. What does Zach do when we get into the 26th yard line in the red zone? About to be in the red zone. Run. Run. Sack. Not a not a throw in the end zone. Now, what I do like about Zach is he's an honest man. Um, in, in his press conference, he did admit that you know he was you know he should have thrown in the end zone. He should have done more. And that and just a learning lesson. I mean, the guy's like the guy's like he's young. He's not like a Bill Belichick or Andy Reid who who've made these mistakes. And like those coaches made those mistakes. The reason why you haven't seen them make those mistakes very often is because when they probably made those mistakes, we weren't watching. So give Zach a chance. I I will still – Zach hasn't lost my vote of confidence. I mean, the fact that the team is is performing as well as they are and they look good as, as well they are sometimes, it's like, man, next year is going to have high expectations. Like this this feels like – okay, I guess that this, this, this 2021 Bengals feel like the 2019 Browns. They were like, oh, my God, they showed flashes of being really good but missed the playoffs. And then 2020, they make the playoffs. Um, actually, I think 2019, oh, 2018 Browns. Because 2019 Browns was Freddie Kitchen and, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, 2018 Browns. Uh, that's what, like, the Bengals are just right there. But I don't think they're going to get a Baker Mayfield second slump, which kid, kid, you know, uh, Freddie Kitchen. Out of, out of Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor is a way better coach than Freddie Kitchen was. And, in, you know, the fact that the Bengals in 2020 
No, the 2019, that last game, beat the Browns at home. So, and the fact, I, and you know what? I can't wait for the Bengals-Browns game because I know it's off topic, but I, I feel like we're really going to see how, if it, that Bengals-Browns game is becoming so much more important because they're both both seven and six now. And if, you know, they have the same record going into that last game, that the winner could win the, you know, could win the North, we'll see how good Zach Taylor as a coach is. Because do or die at that time. I mean, like, if you don't, if you big too conservative, you'll find yourself out of the playoffs. So, uh, I think we still have to wait and see with Zach. Uh, he still has my support. I mean, his record's horrendous, but those 2019 and 2020 teams were not good. Um, him finally uh, getting the players that he wants. Uh, I'm excited to see um, a full off season where Joe Burrow is not doing rehab, like where Joe Burrow is actually doing an off season. I think uh, this team is going nothing, nothing but up. And I know these last two weeks have been very frustrating, but if you look at those last two weeks, whew, those be- like there's certain points in those games where the Bengals look dominant, just like. They're so close. If they can do this first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, could be a Super Bowl contender. And I think that's a credit to Zach. And I, and credit to Mike Brown. I know we, 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 we talk shit about Mike Brown all the time because, you know, he's cheap. He won't build an indoor facility for the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, but I think the way we, when Zach came in, it, I think it was Mike Brown's uh, realizing that he needs to change because since, since Zach Taylor has been hired, been hired, we've been spinning in free agency, uh, which we don't do. We've never done. I mean, we trade, I mean, BJ Hill for Billy price. Holy, what a trade. What a trade. Don't, I mean like the Bengals are not the bungles anymore. So people who are still thinking that this team sucks are like, oh, no, same old Bengals. This ain't the same old Bengals. This is something starting new. The same old Bengals died in 2018 with Marvin Lewis. I know that 2019 was horrible. You know, sometimes to build something great, you got to start from the ground up. And what for, for what Zach did for these three years, and, you know, Lou Ramarumo, the way this defense is performing, yeah, I'm very, like, I'm excited to see what a fourth year would be. Um, but they but they gotta win next year. Next year's the is the Zach. All right, all right, Zach. You've shown that you can win some games and win some big games. Can you do it consistently? Can you win more than two games straight? We'll see. So that's my opinions on Zach Taylor. If you have different opinions or want to comment on things I said, put on the comment description. Um, my name is uh, J.K. Bengal. Who day? Have a good day.